right, so last video we talked about a linear combination of independent normal variables, and we took different independent normal variables. Now let's think about what happens if we take the same normal variable. So I'm going to come back to this example, but let's look at where this formula is coming from. So let's start by just looking at a linear combination of, so let's say we have a sample of n uh, x variables that are normally distributed with a mean of mu and a standard deviation of sigma squared. Sorry, not a standard deviation, a variance. So then I'm saying that my sample is all the same x, and we have x1, x2, x3, down to xn. Now, so I've got just, I pick a whole bunch of x's. So then my expected value of all of those x's, so this is going down to n, and my expected value of all of those is going to be the expected value of the sum from i equals 1 up to my n of xi. So I'm going to end up with n of my means because my linear combination, I'll just add, all, add up all of the means, but they're all the same, so I get n times the mean. My variance, if I do the same thing and do a linear combination of all of those, well, this is going to be variance of x1 plus variance of x2 plus variance of x3. So this is, remember with variance, it's not that I'm saying this is n xi's, because then my variance would become n squared sigma squared. Instead, I'm doing x variance of x1 plus variance of x2 plus variance of x3, etc. Because, let me make this clearer, this is going to become variance of x1, x2, x3, xn. And remember, we can't just add all of these up and say n x's because that's different for variance. So this becomes n times sigma squared. All right, so that's if we took this whole sample of n. But now, let's say that we're going to pick just one of these. So I'm taking x bar to be an independent variable from my sample. So from my sample of x1 to xn. So e of x bar is going to be the average of my mean. So that's going to become that my e of x bar is going to be e of the sum of all my xi's over n. Well, that of course is just going to be 1 over n, sum of all my e of x's. That of course was n mu, so I end up with just mu. Now if I look at my variance, I'm going to say that my variance of x bar is the same thing the variance of the sum of the different xi's over n. Well, that's going to be 1 over n squared times this value, which is going to give me sigma squared over n. So that's where these formulas are coming from. So in this case, this is, if I take a full sample, this is one observation out of the sample, or the average of the sample. So 
that's an average of the sample of n x's. So let me put in an extra page here. And then I can move all this down. All right, so now I can come back and solve this one. So I've got four independent observations of x. So my n is four. Find probability that x bar is less than 14. Well, e of x bar is going to be equal to my mu, which is 12. Variance of x bar is going to be my variance over four. So 15 squared over four. fifty six point two five so my x bar is then a normal distribution twelve fifty six point two five so probability that x is less x bar is less than fourteen that's the same one fourteen is it fifteen again no twelve this time and then square root of 56.25. And I get a probability 